Hello, I'm Mike Collins from the Old Athens Farm in Westminster, Vermont, and I'm a tomato grower primarily, and I have uh, three greenhouses like this with about 10,000 square feet of greenhouse space in organic greenhouse tomato production. And I've been grafting for about 15 years now, and I also do a lot of custom grafting, so I graft about uh, 2,000 plants a year. Um, and I've been grafting. I started grafting mainly because we were growing buffalo, which is a, not a very vigorous variety, and we were looking for a little more vigor, and especially when we got into the higher, higher trusses. And instead of having a tomato plant that peters out after the fifth or sixth truss, we want a tomato plant that will produce continuously right through the season. And on our max support rootstock, we're able to get that. Where I do most of my grafting and my potting and all that in this greenhouse. Um, I'm getting ready right now to start side grafting some tomato plants. These plants are my top, and here's my rootstock. And it's essentially the same idea as grafting a tree. I have a top that I really like the flavor or the characteristic of the top, and I have a rootstock that's vigorous and very disease resistant, and I'm combining the two. I started these seeds on about the same day. We seed a few uh, in succession, a few days in a row, so that I can make sure I have rootstock and uh, tops that are the same size. I also make sure I have to account for my percentage of germination and also the fact that I may have some weak plants that I'm not going to end up grafting. And also, especially for a beginner, you may want to count on some plants that you're going to lose because you did not graft them properly. These are seeded in 72 trays and one seed per tray and as well as the uh, top here. So here I am ready to graft. I have my razor blades which are regular double edged stainless steel blades, replacement blades that I break in half so that I have a nice small very thin blade to work with. I don't like a uh, thicker um, blade that has the, uh, the hard, thick back. These are very, very thin and flexible and work nicely. Here are my side grafting clips. They're made by Taki. And I have two colors. Supposedly, I think they're different sizes, but actually, I have noticed very little difference. I always keep my rootstock on the left hand side when I'm grafting and my scion on the right and without fail I do that so that I don't get mixed up. I have here I have the four and a half inch pots full of soil that I will plant the plants in after I graft. So here we go. I need a little stick to prick out my plants. I look for a plant that looks healthy and nice stem that's about the right size and then I look for one here that has a similar size stem. I'm going to cut off the cotyledon and the top, throw them in my bucket and then I'm going to cut off the cotyledon and a few of these extra leaves so that they're not in my way and so that the plant has a little less to support while I'm while it is healing. First I'm going to make a downward cut in the rootstock and I'm going to make that cut about two-thirds of the way through at about a 70 degree angle. One thing that I think a beginner often does is make a very thin slice on the edge and that and a thin slice here being afraid of cutting the plant off and when you do that you really haven't accomplished much. Then I'm going to match the cut over here Now I will hold a clip here in my mouth while I put the two plants together. When I do this, I am going to keep a slight downward pressure on the plant holding them together. When I set this up, I set the plants, I made sure these two stems are on the same plane and also that my cuts are perpendicular to the table, which is both are very important so that when I'm holding this together, I'm actually able to hold it. I will then slide the clip on. I then look at it from this side and make sure the graft lines up. 
Sometimes if it doesn't, I can I can push them around and and adjust them a little bit. I then plant them, and when I plant them, I want to make sure I am not just pushing down on the rootstock and separating the graft. Mash that down, get it on the same plane. Downward cut. My upward cut. And then I'll put them together. When I'm doing this by myself, I do between 60 and 70 in an hour. And when I have helped someone to make all those cuts for me, uh, to take the cotyledon off and take the extra leaves off, I can usually do about 90 an hour. These two stems don't have to be exactly the same size uh, because this one was a little thinner. I can make that cut a little longer and make this cut just a slightly more directly across, which will make the surface area about the same. After I finish the tray, I like to water the plants. I do this as I do each row. I water them a little bit right at the stem. And then I'm going to take my spray bottle and I'm going to just mist them a little bit. If it's hot out, I tend to do that. Uh, uh, sunny, sunny out, I might tend to miss them after I do each row, just to help the plant get through the main process. Then I'm going to uh, put these plants under here. This is under my bench, where they're out of the out of the sun and they can recover from the grafting process. I will leave them under here for three nights and take them out just before the fourth night. Here's some plants that came out of the grafting chamber last night. As you can see the, uh, the graft is taken nicely and I, right now what I'll do is I'll wait for another two to four days and when the plant starts to really grow just as it starts to grow maybe I'll see a, a couple roots in the bottom I will begin the weaning process and when I wean the plant I'm gonna cut a notch in the top that goes halfway through the plant and then leave it for two days at which time I'll cut it the rest of the way off. The time I cut it the rest of the way off I'm gonna have to put a little bamboo stake and tie it up because it'll be quite wobbly and I don't want it to twist and um, break my rootstock. Um, I like to do the grafting process, uh, both the first notch and the second second cut in the evening, if uh, rather than the heat of the day. And, and when I do it, I want to also make sure that the plants aren't really wilting a lot. If if some plants do begin to wilt, I will put them back under the bench and really take care of them, miss them maybe, and uh, keep a keep a good eye on them. If I, if I'm able, I keep an eye on the weather report and I may do the, the weaning process uh, when I know that I'm going to have some cloudy weather coming up. So here we have a plant that uh, was grafted uh, probably four weeks ago and it's been in the ground now for ten days. I like the plant to get rather tall so the blossoms are almost opened. Um, even some blossoms open but the fruit not set before I put it in the ground. And then because on the max effort it the plant will actually be too vigorous and I have to be careful not to get a lot of vegetative growth. So I'm going to have two tops here and that's going to hopefully help me absorb some of my excess vigor and I'll have a very productive plant throughout the season. This plant was side grafted and for that reason I start my second leader just under the first blossom and because this, this one has quite a bit of strength and 
when I hang this plant, I'm hanging it so that the first stem will be at an angle and then the second stem will go straight up so that that way I will hopefully have two plants later on that are about the same height. Here you can see the graft union and uh, this is the max support side and here was the old buffalo side which has been cut off. I cut that off just after I about seven days after I graft it. One of the reasons I graft is I'm going to have these nice white healthy roots and hopefully throughout the season that are right here on the surface um, touching the plastic which makes it very easy to fertilize and also they will because they are much more disease resistant they will hopefully continue to come throughout the season. So there are two types of grafting. There's the side grafting and then there's the top grafting. With the side grafting we're leaving the uh, scions roots attached while the plant heals. In top grafting, we're going to immediately cut the plant off and, and then stick them back together with a little silicon clip. The advantage to side grafting is that I can use different sized plants or I have more flexibility in the, in the size plants I'm using and I can use bigger plants. So if I get behind in my top grafting, I still have the option of being able to side graft. The advantage to top grafting is that I don't have to worry about weaning the plants after they're grafted and it's also faster. I can do about 80 plants an hour by myself. I'm getting ready to do my top grafting here. I usually do uh, four plants at a time and get them all set up at once save, to save time. Um, and I cut most of the uh, excess leaves off the top plant so what I'm left with is just a the main leader. I'm going to leave the cotyledons so that I can after the plant has been grafted, I can cut it off and have two leaders that come from the cotyledon that are the same size. The advantage of doing this over the way I was, uh, the way we do it with the side graft, is that these leaders will be close to the same size if they if they come out in good light conditions. After I take the tops off there, I take the cotyledon off of my rootstock, and then I will begin. Cut in. I'm going to cut it uh, again at about a 60 degree angle and now I'm going to cut my scion off. I'll make sure I make this cut below the cotyledon and at the, about the same angle. Come on. Now I have this is a two point O clip. I'm going to slip it over the rootstock. Then I will take one a plant that's the same size and slide them together. I try not to jam them together, I just slide them together so that they're touching. As you can see this goes fairly quickly. Uh, when I started top grafting, I was using uh, soilless mix to start my plants, and I found then it was very easy to get a plant that I liked to graft, and that is one that isn't really hard, but is just slightly hard. And you have to be very careful with the amount of fertilizer you're going to give a plant. Um, you certainly don't want to be adding fertilizer a few days before you graft. You want that plant to uh, be able to be cut in half. And one of the problems I face is since I'm an organic grower, I'm growing my plants in a compost-based mix and it's very easy for me to end up with a, a plant that's too lush for top grafting. And I'm trying to add a little extra vermiculite to my mix or in fact I'm also trying to grow my um, scion in a 100 tray rather than a 72 tray to starve it a little bit. Uh, with top grafting, one of the most important things is the care of the plants after they've been grafted. Um, 
what I'm going to do now is that I have a tray of plants here ready to go. I'm going to miss them. And then I'm going to take a large dome, a tall dome, and I'm going to miss the inside of my dome. What I really want to have is, is the humidity level inside this hospital area to be about 90%. Uh, the ideal temperature would be about 85 degrees. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this under my bench out of the sun as well. And I want to make sure this is well back from the front so that the sun does not shine on it and heat it up. And during the daytime I need to also make sure that my side is rolled up but it's still shading. So during the daytime I'll hold my side like this. So the plants are being shaded but uh, there's air is able to circulate in there and not heat up the plants. After the plants have been in the hospital chamber for four nights, before the fifth night I'm going to take them out. And here's, a, here's some that came out last night. And what I do is I bring them out into the sun, yet I, I, prop, I leave the dome on and I prop the dome up a little bit. Um, and this is to let the plants harden off a little bit. They've been in the shade, remember, and they're also still recovering from the grafting process. If these plants were to begin to wilt, I might put them down on the floor here, for example, underneath something, so they're, they're in indirect sunlight for the daytime during a bright sunny day. Today we had a cloudy day, so I was able to leave them right out on the bench. And it might be two days that I keep them here like this and I might also try to put them in a place in my greenhouse where they're not directly under the heat or, or in the way of the main heat or in, right in front of a HAF fan. I want to put them where they're a little bit protected. Here I have a tray of top grafted tomatoes and they just came out from being hardened, hardened off and now I need to consider my options for what I'm going to do next. Whatever I do I need to have two liters on these plants and there's two ways of getting those two liters. One way is to top these plants right above the cotyledona, and when I do that, I'm going to have two suckers that are going to come from the cotyledona, and those two suckers will hopefully be about the same size, and it will be easy for workers to see two leaders then that are the same size and know how to tie them up. One disadvantage is that I'm going to lose about seven to nine days while I wait for these two suckers to grow back to be the same size as this plant here. The other option I have is to transplant this now directly into a four inch pot and grow it like a regular plant with one stem and then when it comes time to plant it and prune it and train it in the greenhouse is to let one sucker come just under the first blossom. The advantages of letting the sucker under the first blossom become my second leader is that I'm gaining nine days in fruit production and I'll have every other plant essentially in the greenhouse producing fruit on that first cluster which I wouldn't have if I had topped it here. At this point I graft all my tomatoes and that includes heirloom tomatoes and cherry tomatoes. Um, I find that even with what you thought was the most vigorous cherry tomato that takes over your greenhouse, having it on a maxifort is going to give me more consistent production throughout the season. Uh, there are many other things we can graft, of course, and here, for the, all the same reasons that I'm grafting tomatoes, I'm grafting cucumbers onto uh, uh, winter squash rootstock. Uh, the variety name that I'm using for the rootstock is Bombo, or it's Shintoza, or Tetsubuku, too. And then I'm grafting eggplant, and I'm grafting eggplant onto Maxifort. Here I have a side grafted plant that's on the Maxifort, has not been weaned yet, and here is a top grafted plant on Maxifort. Um, there are a few differences when I'm doing this with the with the eggplant. They need a few more extra days in the hospital to heal, um, and with the cucumbers, again, they need a couple extra days uh, to heal properly. In the end, when all is said and done, the co extra cost of grafting is inconsequential compared to the benefits in yield and consistency of yield.